So you're a Wisconsin native, you went out to Colorado, that's where you really got into craft brewing, and then you right. came back here. Uh, talk about a little bit about that influence of being out in Colorado. and You know, I, w I was out west uh, for school and a lot of skiing originally, and found that a lot of my buddies were into drinking uh, big 22 ounce bottles of some really fancy beer. And I was the kid that just had the coin for the 12 pack of Schwill. Um, and, and really just didn't have a way to get into it like they did, but I was interested. So I, f I figured I'd start home brewing. Um, home brewing is very popular out west as it's become kind of all across the country. Um, and spent a number of years while I was in school home brewing on the side uh, to keep up with my buddies and what they were uh, getting all excited about when it came to beer. So, uh, you know, there was a good couple breweries in the town I was living in. I was in Durango, Colorado, a small town about the size of Alloway for people that are familiar with Green Bay Area. Alloway, we were about 15,000 people in Durango. And we had four breweries in the town. Um, so it was, we were like really wealthy with breweries and beer knowledge. Um, so it was easy to go down uh, around the corner and talk to any brewer um, and kind of pick their brain about what they were into, um, you know, what were the styles that were coming up, how they were doing their stuff, and um, eventually worked my way into washing kegs and filling bottles and eventually working in their brew house um, out there, which was a great experience. Um, and I kind of found that this was really what I was interested in doing um, as a career for myself and uh, needed to figure out a way that we could bring it to life um, back home in, in Wisconsin. Still make as three basic beers that are out there available uh, year round out in retail places. Uh, really the flagship is, is the Wisco Disco. That's what built Still Make, right? Right, Wisco Disco is, is our baby. It's the one that started the company and the reason why we have the facility we're in now. Um, we, we started brewing this uh, in 2012. Our uh, first customer was Nikki's over in De Pere, put us on tap in May of 2012, gave us a chance, and the brand really just grew from there. Um, it's an, we market it as an amber, um, but it's a bit hoppy for a typical amber, um, and I cut it with a little bit of lactose, which is really like the unique part to the beer. Lactose uh, is not uh, fermentable by brewer's yeast, so it stays creamy, uh, a little bit sweet um, as a finish. So while it's overly hot for an amber, it's not bitter at all. It's finish is real easy going, um, but it's got some good flavor to it. And I think that's what's brought the popularity to it. That and lactose being a milk sugar works well with the cheese curds and pizza and it fits for Wisconsin. And then next to that, then of course, um, you, can't, you can't be a craft beer without an IPA, right? Right, yeah, so we wanted to get into the IPA thing. We, we've got a brand we call Super Kind. Um, we call it that because it's really kind of a, more or less a gateway IPA. It's brewed with all Pilsner malt, uh, a little bit of Bonlander Munich, so, but just a touch. As you can see, it's super light in color. Um, it's very approachable, but it's got good aroma to it, which IPA drinkers are after. So we're using Wisconsin grown hops with this one. Um, they're all late edition for the home brewers and other brewers out there. Late edition hops are the ones that really bring those nice floral notes uh, to the beer, but again, doesn't make it overly bitter. So it's approachable, it's easy to drink, it, it's close to 7%, so it packs the punch that you're looking for with an IPA. And that's something to keep in mind too, if people are, are kind of new to the whole thing, is it is kind of important to watch the, the alcohol by volume, especially if you're coming from you know, some of the bigger beers that are typically for maybe 5% at the most. At yeah, if you're, if you're typically really... a domestic beer drinker uh, working into the craft world and you're t kind of finding some fun beers with it, um, it's actually a great segue into our next brand, which is our Bees Knees. So these are the three main beers we do, but Bees Knees is really our go-to for the folks that stop by the tap room and say, hey, I'm looking for something that's a little bit on the lighter side. Bees Knees is a honey rye. Again, doesn't fit any traditional categories. The honey it leaves a little bit of sweetness to it, helps dry the beer out a touch. Uh, again, makes it very easy and drinkable. The rye um, is generally described as bready or spicy. Sometimes can be confused for hops. This is a very low hopped beer, um, but with the rye it gives it enough character. So those that are looking for something that's a little bit more than the average everyday beer, um, kind of find a nice balance with the bee's knees. We, uh, we did an anniversary beer we called Double Disco. So it took our, our flagship Wisco Disco recipe and more or less amplified all of the raw materials up to the point where we got 8% alcohol by volume on it. It's a celebration beer that we did for our anniversary. Uh, went over great. Um, it was really fun to do. We're looking forward to doing it year after year um, in April. Um, and then Perky Porter is kind of our, our cooler month beer. It's a milk chocolate uh, coffee porter that we use some locally roasted coffee beans for. 
Um, smells and tastes like a really great uh, iced coffee, if you will, uh, but carries 7% alcohol on it. Yeah. So nice one for the wintertime.